reading from Seth, Dreams and Projections of Consciousness by Jane Roberts. Beginning with chapter 12 on dream recall, how to remember your dreams. This is a dream investigation. I'm going to read some excerpts from here. From excerpt 206, 1965. Seth says, on dream recall, Rupert's dream notebook is coming along very well. In most cases, however, he writes only those dreams which he remembers upon awakening in the morning. Suggestion will allow you both to awaken yourself as soon as a dream is completed. The dream will then be fresh. If your recorder is suitably situated with the microphone easily at hand, then you can speak your dream with less effort than is required to write it down. Of course, records must be kept. The simplest part of this experiment will involve the use of suggestion to awaken yourself at the completion of each dream. The number of remembered dreams should be much higher than your present system allows. I also suggest that the first recalled dream for any given evening be compared with the first recalled dream of other evenings, and that the second recalled dream from any one evening be compared with the second dream from other evenings, and so forth. This should prove highly interesting, and if such experiments are carried on consistently over a period of years, then the results could lead to excellent evidence for the various layers of the subconscious and inner self, of which I have spoken for so long. Particular notice should also be taken of characters and settings and the approximate period of history in which the dream action occurs. If the dream seems to happen in no specific location and in no particular time, then these facts should also be noted. Unknown characters within the dream action, person unknown to, persons unknown to you in daily life, should be given careful attention also, and the roles which they play within the dream drama. The primary colors should also be noted. It goes without saying that all dream events should be checked against physical reality so that any clairvoyant elements are clearly checked and recorded. There are many ways in which you can approach these newer dream experiments. You may, if you prefer, begin by, suggest begin by suggesting that you will waken after each of the first five dreams. If possible, we want to get the dreams in order here. Now, there is something else to be considered. The very self-suggestions that will enable you to recall dreams will also change their nature to some extent. This is all right, and the effect will be minimized when the newness has worn off. Again, we want the dreams in the sequence in which they occur. If you do not want to wake up after each dream of the evening, then, then the suggestion should always include, I will recall the first three dreams, or the first five dreams, or whatever. You may try two different wordings for a start, and now I am speaking of precise wording. The first, I will wake up after each of my first five dreams and record each one immediately. The second alternative wording would be the same as the one I have just given, but the wake up would be omitted. So, after each of my first five dreams, I will record each one immediately. That is, it is possible for you to record the dreams speaking into the microphone without awakening in your terms. This is not only possible, but by far the most convenient. You should try both methods and discover which one works best for you. If at all possible, the recorder should be in the bedroom, not in another part of the house. It is 
the immediate dream recall we are after. We want you to record the dream at the instant of awakening or at the instant that the dream is about to dissolve. The time involved in going from one room to another could result in the loss of dream content and vividness. The very motor responses demanded on the part of the body and the extra arousal tendency would force you to lose a good deal of valid material. I would prefer that you work less if necessary using the recorder in the bedroom, then work more intensively leaving the recorder in another room. It is the dream we are after, the dream experience, in all the vividness that we can capture. And if you are going to get a watered-down version in any case, then you may as well continue with your present method of writing them down in the morning and save your sleep. He's talking to Jane. With the method I have just given you, you will be able to capture as much of the whole dream experience as any investigators manage to do in the dream labs when the awakening is done by a mechanical device or by another person. You will also be gaining excellent discipline and training over your own states of consciousness and this in itself will be an important yardstick of progress for you both. Now, mankind uses but a portion of its capabilities. When you are well along in these experiments, you will find that you handle them very well with no draining of energies. Your sleeping hours are already productive. We shall also use them to give you training in the utilization of various stages of consciousness. Added to this, the training will give you valuable insight into the nature of dreams in general the stages of the subconscious and the inner life of the personality when it is dissociated from its physical environment to some considerable extent. Much later, there will be other suggestions for you in which you will direct your sleeping self to perform certain activities, visit certain locations, and bring back information. This is obviously still very much in the future, but it is well within the abilities of the inner self. So keep in mind that this is from 1965, session 206. So obviously in later books, they progress quite a bit. There are several kinds of time that will appear within your dreams and you must sort these out carefully. While sleeping in your present time, you may have a dream that concerns your past with events that you know to have occurred years ago. Nevertheless, you may experience these events within the dream as happening within the present. The present within which you seem to experience the dream is not, however, the present in physical time the present in which your body lies upon the bed. There is a fine distinction here and one that you will learn through experience as you go, as you go on, so I will not discuss it now. It should be obvious that within your dreams, a special location that belongs to the present physical time can be experienced in the past or in the future within the dream framework. And again, there is much more here also than meets the eye. So watch out so that you can catch these developments. I am particularly interested in these experiments, and as a preliminary for them, we will have you work with suggestion alone before you attempt to begin with your recordings. We shall have you both working well in your sleep, for the dream will not be captured in a laboratory by scientists who will not look into their own dreams. The nature of reality can be approached only by an investigation of it, as it is directly experienced in all levels of awareness. Reality, as it appears under dream conditions, under other conditions of dissociation and as it appears in the waking state. 
Even studies dealing with the conscious state are usually superficial, dealing only with upper levels of egotistical awareness. All layers of the personality are conscious. They simply operate like compartments, so that often one portion of the self is not aware of other portions. As a rule, when you are awake, you do not know your sleeping self. You know your neighbor far better, so your sleeping self seems mysterious indeed. When you are awake, as Rupert himself has written, you cannot find the dream locations that have been so familiar to you only the night before. In your sleep, you may have greeted friends who are strangers to your waking self, but consider the other side of the coin. For when you are asleep, you usually cannot find the street upon which you live your waking hours. And when you are asleep, you do not know your waking self. The sleeping self is your identity. There are connections between these two conditions, and there are definite realities that exist in both states. And these are what you are looking for. Only by finding these can you discover the nature of human personality and the nature of reality within which it operates. We have also spoken of the dream as a drama. And you must discover the various levels within which these dramas take place. You will also find that the various levels of the subconscious will yield their own characteristics, and as your records grow, this will become apparent. It is necessary, then, that dreams are recorded in consecutive order whenever possible. Alright, so now moving on to the Ego and Dream Recall excerpt from Session 181. Um... This is August 25th, 1965. The ego skims the topmost surface of reality and awareness. This is not the result of any inherent egotistical quality. It is true that the ego's responsibility is with the relationship between the self and the physical environment. It must necessarily focus within the confines of physical reality. Nevertheless, it is fully capable of perceiving far more than Western man allows it to perceive. Fear, ignorance, and superstition limit its potentials and therefore limit even its effectiveness within the physical universe. The ego itself cannot directly experience certain intuitions and psychological experiences, but it can experience them insofar as it can become aware of them on an intellectual basis. When training forces the ego to become too rigid and to limit its perceptions of other realities, then the intuitions will not be accepted by the ego, because intuitional experience will not fit into the framework of reality that it accepts as valid. The ego, in that case, will therefore fight against what it then considers an unknown threat to survival. Struggles are initiated, then, that are entirely necessary. We want to bring intuitional comprehension to a point where the ego will accept it. In our dream experiments, this is one of the purposes we hope to achieve Ego is not equipped to delve directly into non-physical realities, but if it is trained to be flexible, it will accept such knowledge from other wider horizons of the self. And the ego must have its feet upon solid earth. It is naked and out of its element outside of the normal environment of physical existence. To some extent, its distrust of the dream experience is necessary for the overall balance of the personality. Physical reality is, after all, a rock to which the ego must cling. From it, the ego achieves its prestige and reasons for existence. 
This provides necessary balance and control and results in the sturdy anchorage of the personality in the environment in which it must presently survive. You have here one of the main reasons why you must request the subconscious to enable you to recall dreams. The ego would see no reason for such a memory and on general principles attempts to repress them. Again, however, this excellent balance and these fine controls exist. The ego will accept knowledge derived from the dream state as a man might accept a message from a distant land in which he does not care to dwell and whose environment would both mystify and astonish him. In our dream experiments, then, we will allow you to bring such messages to the ego. We will attempt to map the exotic country in such a way that the ego can understand what is there in terms of resources that can be used for its own benefit. We will be involved with a study of the characteristics of the dream world in general and attempt to isolate it as a separate reality for the purposes of examination. Then we shall regard it in its relation to physical reality using comparisons and dissimilarities. This will then allow us to proceed into the relationship between the waking and sleeping personality and discover the many ways in which the personality's aims and goals are not only reflected but sometimes achieved in and through the dream condition. Usually the dream state is considered from a negative standpoint and compared unfavorably with the waking condition. Emphasis is laid upon those conditions present in the waking state but absent from the dreaming experience. We shall consider those aspects of consciousness which are present in the dream environment and absent in the physical one. No study of human personality can pretend to be thorough that does not take the importance of dream reality into consideration. In some discussions, we will state the ways in which conscious goals can be achieved with the help of the dreaming self. All of this material will be, will be reinforced with experiments I hope you will conduct yourselves. As mentioned previously, we will also deal with the nature of space, time, and distance as they appear in the dream environment. Some of our experiments along these lines will be most illuminating. Here, the ego cannot go, but it can benefit from the information. And perhaps in time, even a shadow of the ego may pass through that strange land and feel in some small way at home.